Hello everybody, welcome to Sin City Living. My name is Jason, I'll be presenting today's episode. As always, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. We have constant content coming out for you guys. And we wanna do our usual shout out to our patrons. We appreciate all the tips and support. It's just gonna to go towards making the channel better and adding more games. And as we've mentioned in the past, if you have your own personal strategy or something you're curious about, please email us at sincitylivinglv at gmail.com and we will be happy to do a video on it or discuss it with you. Or if you just have some general questions about Vegas, we, we do our best to answer as many of the, the emails as we can. Uh, so far we're at 100%, but I haven't had a huge flood of emails yet either. Um, so for today's strategy, this is going to be an extremely basic strategy. Very, very basic, very simple strategy. Um, it's an interesting one uh, for its simplicity. Uh, does not, this one does not require a large bankroll in terms of what we typically consider a large bankroll. Um, this is going to require a bankroll of somewhere in the range of a uh, few hundred dollars. Two to three hundred dollars. I know some people consider a small bankroll as twenty or forty dollars, but honestly, there there flat out is no strategy for for super super low bank bankrolls other than Iron Cross or Iron Cross variant, um, or just twenty six, twenty seven across. So, because uh, um, you just with a super low bankroll, you just can't see enough shooters. You you want to see a decent number of shooters. Some some strategies. Some some people will say you want to have a big enough bankroll to see ten shooters. Um, I'm not entirely bought into that, but the only downside to this strategy that I see is that while it doesn't take a whole lot of money to get it going, and once it gets going, it can, it can really do some cool stuff, it's that once it gets going thing, it can take, there's going to be times, a lot of times this strategy is going to work. This strategy is going to work to get to your second level, which is where you want to be. But I've also seen a whole lot of roles that would have just really irritated the person playing the strategy. So before I keep going into that, let me just show you what the strategy is. Let's say the point is nine. You're going to go to twenty-four dollars six and eight. Okay. Pretty basic. Twenty-four dollars six and eight. Um, some people. Um, oh, I'm sorry. No, not twenty-four dollars six and eight. Twenty-four dollars six or eight. You're going to pick one. Pick a a number. Okay, so if the point were six, you would just do the eight. Okay. If the point were nine, you would pick one. So we'll we'll pick the eight. Okay. So this is why this strategy is kind of a risky strategy because there are thirty six combinations of the dice and there's only five of them that hit an eight. Yes, eights are common numbers to roll. So were sixes. Five out of thirty six is still not a huge overwhelming uh, percentage. It is certainly possible to have a hot shooter that does not hit an eight. It's that, that right there is rare depending on what you define as a hot shooter, but I have also seen seven or eight rolls of the dice without an eight coming a single time, or a six coming a single time. It can happen. I once played on a table that had an all tall, all small, and the make them all, that the shooter rolled for 45 minutes, I made a pretty sizable amount of money, and never hit a single six or eight. That was very weird. That's why it sticks out in my head after a few years, because that was extremely strange. So it just it just sticks out. But it's certainly possible. So you're going to pick one of these two numbers, and that's your strategy for the first level. You need it to hit in order to hit the more fun level part of the strategy. So what happens if it hits? Well, if it hits, it pays $28. So we're going to pay it 30 for two just because we happen to know exactly what this strategy is going to do. And in fact, we're going to use all red. Okay. So it's going to, so you're going to end up with $52. So what are you going to do with $52? Ah, you're going to splash the chips everywhere. You're going to go 52 across. So you obviously have to pick or a six and eight. You have to, have to pick a six or an, eight or an eight that you are not on because that would be 54 across. It makes it a lot easier if the point happens to be six or eight because then it's the typical across is 52 across. But if it's not, you're going to have to include the point and you're going to have to skip either the six or the eight. But at this point, now you're in level two of your strategy. And now you go with whichever press method you find most appealing or that you enjoy the most. 
And from there, I personally am going to get an 8. The very first thing that happens, any of these numbers roll, give me a $12 8. That's it. That's, that's my, my be all, end all. I'm going for it. Because I, I, I got to have all the numbers. I, I, I personally need all the numbers before I'm going to play anything. So let's say a five hit. So I'm going to say, give me a $12 eight, and I'm going to collect two bucks. So yay, I'm up two bucks. Uh, well, I'm down 22 bucks if I consider my initial $24 buy in. But now I've got all the numbers. So at this point, I either do a power press, a mid press, or a, a weak press, just a one unit press. Entirely up to you. How would I play this? I would probably go with kind of a combination. Um, six or eight hits, I would press them both up to 18 each. Once they're at 18, now I go for single presses. From 18, I would go to 30, from 30 to 42, 42 to 60, 60 to 90, 90 to, 10, to 120 or 90 to 150. I tend to go 90 to 150. Um, 150 to 210, 210 to 300, and then at that point, I just 300 to 600, 600, 1200, 1200, 2400. But you could also go 6 to 24, 24 to 48, 48 to 90, 90 to 180. You could, you could press a lot stronger if you wanted to. 5 and 9, 5 and 9, I would actually do the same thing, I, only I would do two levels of dual press. Um, and the reason that I'm not, I wouldn't personally do the power press method is because by doing a regression strategy, I've already given up on trying to hit table max as fast as possible. I've already given up on hitting that 60 roll hand and winning $50,000. Now I'm just looking to win hundreds, maybe a thousand or so if I hit, hit a really good, really good hand. But if I'm playing this strategy, I also probably start it with a much smaller bankroll. So five and nine hits, I'm going to go, if the five were to hit, I'd say press my five and nine, both to 15 each. Then it doesn't matter which one hits, I would say press to both of them to a quarter each. Now from a quarter, then I would go to, to a mid-press method, 25 to 35, 35, 50, 50, 75, 75, 125, 125, 200, 200 to 300, 300, 500. Then again, once I hit the 500, just like the 600 here, 5 to 1,000, 1,000 to 2,000, so on and so forth. What about the 4 and 10? 4 and 10, I would also do a similar cross press. If the 10 were to roll, I'd say, get my, either press my four and 10 to 15 each, or I would throw in a dollar and say press them to 20 each. Then it doesn't matter which one hits, it doesn't matter if they're at 15 or if they're at 30, I'm gonna say press the four and 10 to 25 each. And from there, then I go back down to my single, to my, my solo presses. So from 25 to 50, 50 to 100, 100 to 200. On the four and 10, when I get to pressing just the individual number, I tend to just double, because you're getting paid almost double. So. If I'm at 50 bucks and I say press it to 100, I'm collecting 50. Just shy of 50, of course, there's a VIG, but that 5% is, is negligible. If I'm at 100 and I say go to 200, I'm collecting 95 bucks, almost 100. And same thing, if I'm at 200, go to 400, I'm collecting almost 200 bucks, collecting 190. So I like the straight doubles. So that would be how I personally would play it. But you could also just say press one unit, you know, six hits, take me to 18 then take it to 24, then take it to 30. Honestly, pressing one unit is very conservative. It's also extremely boring, but it's very, very, very conservative. And the beauty of something like that, the always pressing one unit, is you could tell that to the dealer. You can say, hey, I always press one unit. And the dealer's gonna say, okay, cool. And that's gonna make their dealing smoother, faster, and easier. They'll be able to take care of you quickly. They won't need to ask you what you're doing all the time. They, they won't need to start and stop their payout and press moves because they start to pay it out, then you tell them what you wanna press. If you tell them, I'm always going to press one unit, they're going to say, cool. And they're just going to be able to help you out, go for it, take care of you. That also means that if you happen to have your head turned while you're talking to the cocktail waiter or something like that, the deal is still going to do your standard press, take care of you. Um, just make sure that you are taking care of your dealers. Okay. All strategies, I personally think, should include a $6 across player control for the dealers, but that's entirely up to you. And... What else would I likely do with this? There's one final thing that I would probably do with this once I was at 64 across including. What is that? I'd probably do a $2 C&E. Probably do a $2 C&E. &E. And then once I get my bets pressed up to where, say, I'm 160 across, at that point, I'm more likely now to probably do a $5 horn bet. 
Um, and the reason I'm doing that is I'm kind of modifying off of the, the iron cross and that it's got the field bed to always have every number handled, including the 2, 3, 11, and the 12. Well, now I'm doing the C and E first because it's only two bucks to cover the 2, 3, 11, 12, because I've got the other numbers covered here. I don't need to worry about the 4, the 9, or the 10. I've got those covered here, and they're getting paid better than even money. So just two bucks. Two bucks is enough to get me paid at least a little bit. I'll get paid six bucks on a, on a uh, 2, 3, or 12 and uh, I'll get paid $14 on an, on an 11. Now, once I get to 160 across, where my payouts are pretty decent, even though I'm doing small presses, I'm still collecting more than enough to do a $5 horn bet or $5 horn high bet. I, I don't know which, exactly which one I would do, kind of depends on my mood. But at that point, that way I'm getting paid even better on the, on the horn numbers of 2, 3, 11, and 12. But that's just a personal preference. You certainly don't have to do that. Those bets can get confusing for people. You don't want to make a bet that you don't know how it pays. Dealers do make mistakes, and you want to be able to notice that. There are a lot of backstops. The dealers aren't doing it on purpose, but um, there's a lot of people that are watching, so hopefully it gets caught. But you do want to know what all of your bets pay, always. I hope you guys have enjoyed this strategy. Maybe you can use it. And that would be it. As always, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. We'll catch you guys next time. Thanks.